Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to change the oil in your Subaru. Uh, we're going to be using my WRX today, but the process is really the same for, you know, if you have an STI, a WRX, turbos, non-turbos, um, your mom's Camry, your grandma's Outback, it doesn't even matter what car you have practically, the process is pretty much the same. All you're going to be doing is draining the oil, uh, putting the drain plug back in, putting a new filter in and filling it back up. It's all really the same, so it's so easy to do. I don't know why everybody doesn't do it. The only reason that you should be taking your car to the dealer for an oil change is if you have a warranty that they need to have logged that they've done the oil change. You'll see a lot of people with WRXs having to take their car back there at least for the first two to three years just to make sure that you know it's getting logged, that that oil change is being done every so many miles. Just in case there's any issues, you know, I know the newer WRXs, or not the new new ones, but uh, probably in from 2011 to 2014, they were having issues with Ringlands and all that. A lot of times the dealer's gonna try to uh, blame that on not changing the oil, things like that. You know, anywhere they can get you over at, really, they're gonna be trying to do that because a lot of WRX owners, they're gonna be beating on their cars. I mean, this is what this car's used for. It's used to be, you know, going fast, getting on it, highways, you know, you're on ramps, you know, you might be taking an autocross like I do. Um, and all that's fine, you know, as long as you're safe, but you got to remember to do the maintenance. So taking it to the, deal, to the dealer is a good way to ensure that's done so your warranty is intact. The good thing with this one is there is no warranty and there hasn't been for about 10 years now. So uh, basically I'm going to show you how to change the oil. It's going to be super simple, super easy. It's going to save you a lot of money. So let's get to it. All right, so just to go over some of the things that you're going to need, um, obviously you're going to need your oil. Um, for Subaru, you're, you're going to need about uh, 4.2 to 4.5 uh, quarts. Uh, right here is one gallon, so that is four quarts. And we have a little guy, this is about halfway filled, so I'm hoping I don't need any more than that. This is just what I keep in my car to just top up here and there. Um, over about 3,500 miles, I use yeah, roughly about a half a quart, so that's pretty good. Uh, additionally, you're going to need your oil filter. This is not a Subaru one, but this is a Wix one, also known as the Napa Gold one. Here's the part number if you do need it. Uh, the good thing about this filter is the bypass pressure on it is 23 PSI, which is the same as the Subaru one. That's kind of a critical thing you want in a uh, oil filter. So you can do your research on that, 23 PSI. Um, all steel construction inside, it's better than the OEM one, so uh, it's a good thing to use. Uh, I've taken apart the OEM ones and I haven't had an issue with them over 6,000 miles. I kind of dissected one and it was completely fine inside internally. Uh, the thing is, it's made in the same factory as the Fram ones and the Fram ones get a bad rap, so. Um, you know, honestly, I'd say they're probably okay. They're made to Subaru standards and they're made to hold up on even a WRX or an STI, so you should be fine with that. Um, another thing you're gonna need for your drain plug is uh, one of these drain plug crush washers, and here's the part number if you do need it. Uh, this might be for the pack of 10 that I did buy. I got this off eBay. I think it was about $10 for all 10 of them. They're about two, two fifty at the dealer. It's nice if you kind of buy them all at once so you don't have to keep running to the dealer. Um, it's good to have around. Always use a new one. Uh, I remember on my 95, I used to have the same one on there. I swear this thing was on there for like 10 years and it worked just fine. Uh, I do replace them every single time now. They're so you know, cheap and easy to put on. You might as well just change it. Just so you don't have any leaks coming out of your drain plug. So another critical thing. Just make sure not to skip on that. Um, and finally, pr practically the only tool you're going to be needing here is a 17 millimeter um, socket and your wrench here if this one wasn't all jammed up but uh there you go um that's the only tool you're really going to need you will need something to catch your oil in i just have a this pink pan thing that i have so you can go to walmart and buy one of those fancy drain plug things i find that they kind of leak but if you get a good one i guess it would be okay but this is everything you're going to need um just get your supplies all in order before you start and um let's get to it all right, so the first thing you can go ahead and do is just pop your hood and go ahead and remove your oil cap. And another, you know, really quick tip is just take a garbage bag and uh, lay it out on the floor here, just in case you have any drips underneath your car when you're doing all this. Uh, it's gonna save you a lot of time later whenever you're cleaning up. So, just a quick tip. 
So the next thing you can do is go ahead and take your jack and jack up your car. It could just be on one side, it doesn't have to be from the middle. Uh, probably not a necessary step, uh, depending on your car, but mine's lowered, so it's a little tricky getting underneath it without it jacked up. So, uh, you know, just jacking it up is going to give you that extra room that you can fully slide underneath there and get to everything you need to get to. All right, so right now I just have the, uh, what I'm going to use to catch the oil down here. My drain plug is right here and my oil filter is up here. Uh, position this a little bit off to uh, the passenger side because whenever you do get the pressure coming out of here, it's going to push the oil a little bit here. It's not going to fall straight down um, and you'll get pretty much everything in there. So you can just go ahead and take your wrench and uh, put it on here and get that off. One other quick tip is definitely whenever you're releasing the old oil from the oil pan, make sure to use a glove. There's a lot of contaminants in used motor oil and it actually is known to cause cancer. So if you do get it on your hand, it's not a big deal, but just don't get it all over your hand and like kind of rub it in. It's probably not the greatest. Um, so yeah, go ahead and use that. I already used the, um, my socket here and loosened up the bolt and I'm just gonna go spin it with my hand here. And I'm gonna move this over because I know it's gonna flow towards that side. Go ahead, and this is a magnetic one, so whenever it releases, I'm gonna pull it away from the oil pan. Because I have had in the past, a lot of times if you're not holding this correctly, it's gonna immediately suction to the oil pan and you're gonna have shit go, or oil just going everywhere. It's a pain in the butt. So just go ahead, take this, get ready to pull it out and pull it out right into the pan. And as you can see, I did not get any on really anything here. So uh, just a little bit on the hand. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop that in there. And uh, we're gonna let all the oil kind of roll out into the pan here. And give this a little, little bit, wait till, you know, it kind of slows down and stops pouring into the pan. And then next you're gonna go ahead and take off your oil filter. All right, so I gave that a little bit of time to uh, kind of pour out into the pan here. My pan is actually big enough that that little dribble that's going into the pan is still getting into the pan and not onto the ground at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this up. I already cracked it open uh, real quick just to make sure it was not super tight, but you can go ahead and just start uh, twisting off your oil filter here and you're going to see, you're going to have some oil spill out of it. As you can see right now, it's coming out. Uh, don't be afraid of it. Just go ahead and get it off pretty much as quickly as you can without getting oil everywhere. Keep it going. Maybe one more turn. Okay, there we go. And you can just go ahead and drop this into your oil here and let that all drain out. And uh, right now you can pretty much go ahead and um, just let everything drain over the next, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. You want to try to get as much out of here as you can. And uh, we'll come back when it's all done. All right, so while you're waiting for your oil to drain, it's always nice to have a uh, cold, refreshing drink. So uh, crack open a uh, brewski and uh, just hang out for probably the next 10, 15 minutes. All right, so just another um, you know, quick tip for all you pros out there who might be you know, autocrossing, definitely taking your car to the track, drag strip, anything like that. Um, go ahead and go to Blackstone Laboratories. Go look them up on Google. I'm not really sure what their official website name is, but they, are, they actually do testing for your oil. So you go ahead and, and they give you this little kit here. The kit is absolutely free. You just put in your, um, your address and everything. They send this right out to you free of charge. Uh, go ahead, follow the instructions. Take your um, used oil and pour it directly into this. You know, they give you everything on how you're supposed to do it so it doesn't get contaminated getting from your car into here. Uh, but yeah, you go ahead and you send this off to Blackstone. They over the course of, I think, you know, two, three weeks or something like that. They'll get back to you with a whole rundown of all the properties in your oil, you know, the contaminants, everything like that. And they can definitely tell if, you know, you have any issues, if, you know, if there's metal shards in there that you can't see, if there's other, you know, types of metal that's, you know, getting in your oil. They can actually see if there's any, you know, wear going on in your engine through this oil analysis. So this is a really great thing to do. Um, I haven't done it yet. This is actually an old kit, I actually ordered it, and sorry guys, sorry Blackstone guys, but I actually didn't get to send you one yet, so. Uh, eventually this is gonna go back up on here and uh, we'll get to that later at some point. Um, but right now, uh, just waiting for this to drain out. And um, we'll be back. 
All right, so now that all the oil has pr pretty much drained out here, we just got a few drips coming down from the uh, drain plug there. And obviously up at the oil footer location, we're just gonna continue to let that drip. But I'm gonna take a uh, paper towel here and just start dabbing that down and uh, make sure it's all clean basically. All right, so I went ahead and got the drain plug out of the uh, bucket that I just dropped it in. And you can see this is a magnetic drain plug. This is not a stock one. So you can see a little bit of buildup actually of um, you know, some type of metallic material, obviously that's magnetic. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different components in an engine. Some are magnetic, some are not. This is gonna catch a lot of the ones that are that are floating around in your oil. So obviously that's not a whole lot. You know, it's doing what it's supposed to in uh, collecting those. Uh, you don't really need a uh, magnetic drain plug, but I thought they were kind of cool, so I picked one up, and um, you know they're only about ten, fifteen dollars. So uh, I wouldn't say highly recommended, but you know if you want that added insurance, uh, it's kind of highly debated. Basically, anything that would be on this would eventually be caught in your oil filter, so it's not a big deal to have one of these. But you can actually see, I mean, even on you know a relatively healthy engine, as I think mine is right now. Um, you're still going to get some deposits, uh, you know, hanging on there, so uh, just something to be aware of. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this all up and get it all ready to be reinstalled. All right, now with the, uh, the drain plug all cleaned up, as you can see, we're going to go ahead and take the uh, crush washer that we had before, and we're going to take the flat side here. See, this side is flat. This side's a little bit curved. We're going to take the flat side, and we're going to put it in, in. As you can see, it's magnetic. you got to watch with these. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get it on top of here. Oh, let me get it on here. Literally, I mean, it is like, this is what you get. That's how strong the magnet is. Uh, to get it on there, you got to really place it down on there. So uh, you got the flat side against the flat part of the uh, plug here. And then you got the curved part on top because your drain plan is actually curved. So that's going to form fit to the uh, pan there. And it's going to give you the best type of seal. So that's all ready to go. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take my oil filter and I'm going to pop open this used, well not used motor oil, but here you go. This is the, um, the one I've been using just to fill up my car. It's just easier to pour in here. But I'm going to go ahead and prime the um, oil filter here just by filling it up. So you can go ahead and fill this up all the way to the top and you can actually even go over it a little bit up to about there. And you're going to notice all the baffles in there, they're going to take that oil and it's all going to seep in. So you can see the little bubbles coming out and it continuously going down. Uh, these actually take a lot of oil to fill them all up. You're going to, you know, pretty much this whole thing's going to be filled with oil. And you can see it's all the way down in there. So you can go ahead and continually keep filling this up. And when it gets to the top like that, you can actually take a dab and work your way around the uh, top part of the filter here this rubber uh, ring going around here and this is going to ensure that you don't have any leaks and this doesn't get stuck on by sealing it with a little bit of oil around here so now that we got that all lubricated up and again um, new motor oil you can obviously touch with your hand you're not going to die it's the contaminated used oil that you probably don't want to get all over yourself so just go ahead and you can even see um, in that amount of time that I kind of lubricated that up, it even more got down in there. So we're gonna fill a little bit more up here. And that should be about it. Um, it's okay if you, you know, obviously have a little bit on top there, a little bit all over. Um, you know, it's gonna be like that in the car and it's gonna even seep down there a little bit more. So uh, you do wanna fill these up with oil. You wanna prime them. Just because this one, when you insert it, um, you're actually, it's kind of like a cup right now. It's holding the oil inside and you're just gonna insert it up in there and screw it on. Whereas with a lot of other cars that I've worked on, um, you might have the oil filter, you know, up here at this angle, maybe to the side, somewhere like that. Uh, and that way you can't really uh, fill this up because if you fill this up, you're gonna tip it over. So uh, for a Subaru, you can definitely fill this all the way up because that's the way it's gonna be in the car. Whenever you're just starting it normally, it's always gonna be filled with oil. So. Uh, you know, it's best to put it back in the way that it was before. And uh, you can go ahead. And what I'm gonna do next, I'm not gonna show it on camera because, you know, you're just crawling underneath the car basically. But I'm gonna reinsert the drain plug. I'm gonna torque this down. There is actually a torque specification, but in reality, you don't have to be, you know, so precise with it. 
get it tight, but obviously don't strip the, um, the threads on the oil pan, that would be really bad. And obviously for this too, you'll want to um, uh, reattach this, spin it on, make sure it's all the way on, and then give it probably about another quarter of a turn. Don't make this really tight because if you crush down this uh, rubber ring around here, you'll actually get uh, a little bit of seepage coming out and it'll actually leak um, more than if you just left it loose. So obviously keep it on there enough that it's gonna stay on there. A lot, both of these items have a lot of threads on so they're not gonna fall off, but do make sure they're tight. Uh, there's nothing worse than, you know, you bomb it down the track or out on the highway and one of these comes loose and your oil is all over the ground. So that would be disastrous, don't do that. Make sure both of these are on, make sure they're both tight. And uh, I'll even look up the torque specification for this, just so uh, you know we're being accurate. I think it's around like 35 foot pounds, but don't quote me on that. Uh, I'll put something down in the description or on the screen so you know exactly what to torque this down to. All right guys, so I actually um, lowered the car down now. I have the oil filter on, I have the drain plug back in with the crush osher, all that's tightened down. Um, I initially took off the oil cap to relieve the air pressure inside so when it pours out it pours out nice and even and you're not getting it everywhere with the air trying to get back in through the train plug so that's off now I'm gonna remove the um, dipstick gonna clean it off and then we're gonna start pouring the new oil in all right so I have my uh, funnel in there I have my uh, new oil here I'm just gonna go ahead and slowly start pouring this in And this is going to take a little bit. I have a small funnel right here, so I won't show you all of it. But you're just going to continually keep pouring this in. Um, in general, with the Rotella, since it comes in a gallon, you're going to be able to put that full gallon in. And then you can use your other one to kind of top up that rest of it. Normally, you're going to use probably another half a quarter or so. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to hope I have enough. But if not, I'm not going to chance it. I'm just going to take my other car and run down to um, you know, Walmart or something and get another quart. All right, so I went ahead and poured the rest of that in. I'm gonna now insert the dipstick again. And we're gonna see if we can get any of this registered on the dipstick at this point. And it does look, yeah, it looks like we have pretty much up to about here on the dipstick, not quite up to the full line yet, but we definitely have enough in there that if we needed to start run the car, at least, um, I think we'd be okay at this point. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna actually take the, the rest of this and top it up a little bit. Then we're gonna let it all seep in there and, and get in all the nooks and crannies and um, you know, check it again, probably in another 10 or 15 minutes. Just remember that oil kind of moves pretty slow, so you know, don't rush any of this process. Let a lot of it, when you, when you drain it out, let that you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes even. Hey, even if you have an hour, let it all drain out. Um, and then go ahead when you're filling this back up, fill it up let it seep in and then you know check it again in 10-15 minutes and see where that level's at. That level might be a lot lower than uh, you initially thought it was. So I'm just going to go ahead and top up with this and uh, you know I'll check back and show you uh, what it all looks like when it's done. Alright so I ended up actually using um, the entire about half a quart that I had and the entire uh, big jug that I had. And you'll see uh, you'll want to get this up. The way you actually read this is this mark down here, that's your low mark. You absolutely need to have that much in. Um, between there and the full mark is exactly one quart. So this right here is your full mark. You'll want it up and you actually want it to be touching um, this mark, which mine is. This little notch right here, that is the don't go above that level. So you do not want to have more than that because um, at the top, um, you, you'll get a lot of like frothiness and when it actually uh, frosts up like that and you get too, too many bubbles and kind of just like you know it, it's just not acting as it should as, as it's really intended um, it's just not going to lubricate as well so you want to have it you know somewhere between here and basically here but right about there is absolutely ideal uh, the reason why they have this you know you want that extra oil capacity of about one quart which is you know approximately 20 25 percent of you know extra that's going to be in there that's just going to be flowing around number one uh, that's just extra oil capacity but also you know you're not going to be checking your oil every single day so you know it's it's definitely for a Subaru it's going to slowly you know get down here obviously over you know 3,000 miles you should only be you know 
using about like you know half a quart or full quart. Full quart is pretty much the, pretty much the max. You, if you have more than a full quart uh, being used in 3,000 miles, I'm gonna have to say you probably have an issue. You know, with like a lot of your seals around the pistons, ringlands, something of that nature. Oh, that's burning that much. You might have some other issues too of it getting, you know, uh, you know, stuck somewhere else and kind of getting burned up. So um, you, you would definitely want to check into that. But normally, you know, you're not going to use all that much. But that, that's why they have that leeway basically in there. All right, guys. So the last thing I did was go ahead and put my oil cap back on, put the um, dipstick back in. I made sure there's no leaks underneath. The oil level is up to where it should be and everything's buttoned up and it should be uh, good to go at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and check this in probably, uh, you know, about 100, 200 miles and see, you know, where that oil level is and make sure everything's good. I have my old oil sitting over here. I'm gonna put it back in the uh, new jug that it came in, uh, dispose of that properly, all that. Uh, take the oil filter, it's actually sitting still in the uh, container over there. I'm gonna just throw that away. I'm gonna make sure I get all the oil I can out of it too, just so I'm not, you know, throwing a ton of oil away. Um, but that's basically how you change your oil for, you know, with a synthetic oil change for about $35, $30, $35, depending on, you know, if you use a crush washer, the oil folder you use, type of oil you use is a big deal. But uh, make sure you always use the uh, recommended specifications from uh, the manufacturer. It's always a big thing. Um, yeah, so go ahead, change your own oil, and uh, 